Hi everyone, this is Adil Yusuf. Today I am presenting a paper called Person Image Synthesis via Denosing Diffusion Model. And this uh, with me are Manu, Pradvi, and uh, Mukund. Uh, this paper is uh, a recent, recently accepted as CV, CVPR 23. And Dr. Shah uh, is one of the authors in this paper. <clears throat> so we'll start with the contents. Uh, so um, I will start with the uh, problem formulation. What is pose, pose image synthesis? So we take a target pose at input. Along with it, we also take an image having specific style, as you can see here. And we are required to produce an output image where it should not satis only satisfy the target pose, but it also sh should satisfy the style. These are the requirements. In the existing literature so far, this pose guided image synthesis problem is usually uh, handled through GANs. And GANs transfer the source style to the a given pose in a single forward pass. However, it becomes quite challenging as the models struggle to preserve the source appearance in complex scenarios. As you can see here, uh, the pattern on the shirt does not match exactly with the given style pattern. Now coming to the diffusion based pose synthesis, we take image X, XS having specific style that is appearance. We also take target pose at an in, input named as XP here and train a conditional diffusion model P theta to produce the desired output. Here the generation process is divided into several conditional denoising diffusion steps where each steps, a step becomes relatively simple to model and leads to better output. Following are the main contribution of this paper. It's the first diffusion based approach for post guided person synthesis task. It sets new state of the art on deep fashion and market uh, data set. And authors show that synthesized image can be used in the downstream task. <clears throat> now I will start with the overall framework later each block will be uh, explained in detail. So we take target pose XP and the noisy image YT, passes to, pass it through a noise prediction module which is based on standard unit architecture. Then we take input image XS having specific appearance, passes through texture encoder HV such that no, that uh, okay just so the output of the texture encoder are diffused with the noise prediction module at different layers how they are diffused uh, will be explained later uh, then the noise it is predicted at the end uh, uh, at time t condition at post xp and the source x and the style xs XP, the pose and the style will guide the denoising de process such that the final image follow the given skeleton structure and style. So now uh, Manu will take over and explain the detail of each block. So the proposed method is as follows. Given an image, a noised image YT for any arbitrary time step T, we will follow a backward diffusion process to go denoise the image. And uh, as you might have noticed, forward diffusion process is exactly the reverse of that, where we have a Y T minus one denoised image. We will add in noise or impute the noise and get the noised representation Y T. The difference between all the traditional methods and the current one is that the diffusion process is conditioned on two different variables, which is XP, the target pose and XS, which is the target style. Now let's just look at more detail what exactly is going on in the backward division process. So given an image YT, noised image YT and the target pose XP, we concatenate them together in the channel dimension. And following the previous works, we will pass it through a unit encoder and a unit decoder, which essentially aims at giving us the denoised image. But this standard approach, direct approach doesn't work and the authors perform or proposes a new block called texture diffusion block. The texture diffusion block aims at taking the inputs of the unit encoder 
and the target style information and fuse it together to make it easier for the decoder to essentially generate or synthesize the denoised version of the image yt minus one that is more aligned with the target pose given xp and the style xs. Now let's just look at in more detail what texture diffusion block has to offer. The texture diffusion block takes an input from the unit encoder flh and the style information xs. For extracting the style information, the authors have used a style encoder called HE, which is follows a ResNet 50 architecture. In this ResNet 50 architecture, they extract the multi-level features and concatenate them together to form FS. We will call FS as the feature or the style feature of XS. This FS and FLH, which is the input from the unit encoder, is fused using standard cross attention mechanism. This cross attention mechanism is exactly the same as what we do in a transformer architecture. Precisely, the FLH is used to compute a query vector and the key and value vector is calculated using the FS feature representations. Once we obtain all three feature vectors, we will compute the QKV attention and obtain FLO, which is the output of the texture diffusion block and the input to the unit decoder. The only difference is that this texture diffusion block is embedded among all the unit encoder layers and the decoder layers. And instead of directly predicting the denoised image, the authors proposed to predict following previous works, the noise that was added at YT given XP and XS. The top layer or the top architecture is, they namely call it HN and the bottom style encoder is called HE. Now let's just look. Generated images, self-driving cars, augmented reality, virtual reality, it's all around us. at how sampling works in such a diffusion model. And I will pass on to Prudvi for the same. When talking about sampling, let's discuss the, uh, the vanilla sampling where given YT, which is, which is sampled from a Gaussian distribution and the target, and the target uh, pose and target style, uh, which, are, which are given as inputs to the model and, and we are generating the uh, conditioned noise. Now this condition noise is used to sample and generate YT minus one. Now the authors have explored the vanilla sampling given uh, inputs as YP and X, X, XP and XS, and then they have generated this output. Now, when comparing with the ground truth, we can observe that this is not completely aligned with, uh, with both the style and pose. So to tackle this, they have uh, explored class five free guidance. Looking at class five free guidance as a recap, here in class five free guidance, the diffusion uh, in, in condition diffusion, um, we are generating the noise condition on both on both of the signals, essentially the condition Y, uh, the XP and the XS. But the main, main difference is that 10% of the time, the inputs are, uh, with, uh, we, we replace the inputs with null values and the generated noise is an unconditioned noise, uh, which, which, doesn't which, uh, which doesn't have the inputs uh, XP and uh, XS. Now, uh, this uh, during sampling, we are generating the condition noise using both the unconditioned and the un, uh, the condition noise. Here, the condition noise is uh, uh, where we have replaced uh, the unconditioned noise is where we have replaced both. Hey, can you uh, use a cursor? Can you show where you are because we don't know where. What are you talking about? Yeah, I'm sorry. So. Um, the unconditioned noise is generated using the um, uh, unconditioned noise is generated when we are replacing the XP and uh, uh, XP and um, excess values as null. And the condition is when we are giving both the conditional signals. Here the here the conditional signal, uh, this is also scaled using a scaling factor of two. Now this is used to sample the YT minus one. Now, uh, when the authors have experimented with the classifier free guidance, they have given input as XP and XS, and this is the generated output. When we are comparing with the ground truth, they have seen that uh, both the uh, it is not the generated image is not completely aligned with both the style and pose. While it is uh, able to show good results with uh, generated images where some are uh, aligned with pose, but some are aligned with style, but not both at the same time. So to tackle this, 
the authors have introduced disentangled guidance based sampling in the disentangled guidance based sampling the generated the conditioned noise is generated using both unconditioned and conditioned noise similarly to the uh, classifier free guidance but here the unconditioned noise is uh, the same as before where the uh, input values are uh, replaced with null values the pose uh, the uh, the noise condition on pose uh, in the noise condition on pose we are substituting the style value with null and uh, we are giving it the uh, the pose value and then minimizing uh, subtracting it with the unconditioned noise and similarly in style we are uh, uh, substituting the pose value with null and giving it the style value now at each diffusion time step uh, at each diffusion time step where the input is yt we are generating these three uh, noises which are conditioned on pose style and unconditioned noise and then sampling it uh, to generate yt minus 1 here each each conditional signal uh, is scaled using a scaling factor called y, uh, WP and WS so that we can individually uh, and uh, in individually amplify the conditional signals. So to look, uh, let's look at some of the experimentation details next, uh, starting with the data sets. So the authors have the first data set the authors have used is a deep, is called Deep Fashion in Shop Clothes retrie Retrieval. It consists of more than fifty thousand high resolution images of fashion models. And the second data, data set is a market 1501 data set, which consists of more than 30,000 low resolution images. Uh, and the stark contrast between these two data sets is that the first one is highly curated and uh, it consists of high quality images, while the second one is of low quality and uh, is varies with the illuminations, the backgrounds and the viewpoints. And next, let's look at let's look at the evaluation metrics. The authors have used three different evaluation metrics for the first one is SSIM, which calculates the pixel level image similarity, LPIPS, which computes the distance between the generated images and reference images. And the third is the well-known FID score, which uses, which measures the photorealism of the generated images. Looking at the quantified comparisons here, given three, three different data sets, PIDM can be seen to be outperforming the other state-of-the-art methods in all the three metrics, FID, SSIM, and LPIPS. This means that PIDM is able to generate the most realistic images while also being the most aligned with both pose and style at the same time. To look at some of the qualitative comparisons, uh, I'll pass on to Mukund. Uh, now look at the uh, looking at the qualitative uh, comparison. We here, uh, compare the qualitative method uh, comparisons with the several state of the art models on deep passion data set. The inputs to this model are the target pose XP and the source image XS. Now let's look at in, uh, in detail. We see that the, uh, the PIDM model is able to generate images, which are aligned with both the pose and the style, uh, of the inputs, uh, compared with the ground truth. Let's look at the uh, look at another example to see this, and we can see that mod the model not only aligns perfectly with the pose and style as compared to the ground truth. Uh, we can see uh, the the model compared to previous methods is uh, performing outperforming in all uh, these cases. Here we see some of the uh, uh, examples uh, of NTD, which is the previous state of the art compared to PIDM model doing the qualitative comparison. Here, uh, given the input pose and style, we are able to generate generate much better images uh, compared to the previous state of the art. Now let's look at the results here. The first is uh, results using images from fashion e-commerce site as source and the given poses. The second results are comparing the state of the art uh, methods previous state of the art methods of the on the market 1501 data set we can see that it's able to generate images uh, better in uh, in uh, comparison with previous methods let's take a let's uh, let's go to uh, ablation study now uh, for this let's take a step back and see the model uh, from the baseline here uh, we see that uh, we are having the pose image and the source image uh, and uh, we are only using the uh, unit uh, encoder decoder architecture here we are concatenating the source image directly with the pose image and performing the uh, diffusion uh, process uh, this uh, the generation image generated from this baseline uh, is seen here and we can see that it is not aligning uh, with uh, with the source and uh, with the ground truth perfectly uh, as we can see here 
now uh, to make it better the author proposed uh, adding the ad encoder here which uh, compared to the baseline b1 the b2 baseline benefits from this encoder improving the uh, correlation with the source appearance now look at uh, looking at the generated images self driving cars augmented reality virtual reality it's all around us results of this uh, baseline b2 we see that it is performing much better compared to b1 in terms of style and appearance uh, style and pose target pose now coming to the third baseline we we uh, introduced uh, the texture diffusion block as uh, given by the author this uh, texture diffusion block uh, improves the results uh, effectively and uh, it is uh, able to uh, model the complex interplay between the uh, appearance and the style and the pose information. Uh, uh, looking at the results of B3 baseline, we are able to see that it is having much better results compared to previous baselines. Now, uh, checking the baseline B4, as explained by Prudvi, uh, we are adding the class classifier free guidance first and then the decent disentangled classifier free guidance, which is able to generate images which are aligning with both target pose and source image uh, perfectly compared to the ground truth. Uh, come, uh, looking at the results for all the B, uh, previous methods and the PIDM current model, we are able to see that uh, the current model, which has all the blocks of uh, uh, the baseline and TDB and disentangled classifier free guidance, we see that uh, it outperforms uh, on all the metrics compared to previous baselines. Uh, coming to appearance control. We uh, we can say that the PIDM model, due to it being a diffusion-based model, is able to inherit the flexibility and controllability uh, to enable appearance control. Uh, it is able to uh, it is done by com combining the textures from the style image into the reference image. The model is able to combine seamlessly the areas of interest and generate coherent output images with realistic textures. Here we see a few of the examples of this uh, appearance control. We see that given a style and reference image, we are able to generate images for the given style. Now let's go deeper into this. Uh, for the appearance uh, control, given a uh, source image, which is a style image, uh, and the uh, reference image, uh, along with the mask, which is nothing but a binary mask that marks the region of interest in the reference image, we are able to generate Y bar, which is uh, consistent with the source image uh, as uh, as done by the mask. So how do we do this? Let's go step by step. The first step being calculate YT ref, which is given by this uh, equation at a given time T. The second, uh, uh, where uh, this uh, epsilon is nothing but the normal standard uh, standard normal dif uh, distribution uh, given as as shown. Step two is predict y t iteratively from t equals capital T to t equals one during inference. Here, y capital T is nothing but uh, the standard normal dif uh, distribution uh, given as y capital T. Now com coming to point three, in each step, use the binary mask M to retain Y ref. Uh, using this equation, Y T equals M mask Y T plus one minus M mask Y T ref. So what what it uh, what happens there is it is able to gen uh, retain the Y T ref information in each step when we are doing the uh, diffuse uh, denoising process and uh, using the binary mask M, and we are able to uh, generate Y bar keeping the style in place. Let's uh, let's go to the downstream tasks now. Sorry, uh, we let's uh, see the examples of appearance control now. Uh, we are able to see that given a re reference image and the style images, we are able to generate the exam uh, the ex uh, the uh, the right style information given the reference images. These are few of the examples as shown, and it is able to perfectly match the style given the reference image. Now let's go to the downstream task of perform a person re uh, re-identification. Person re-identification is the task of associating images of the same person taken from different cameras or from the same camera from in different locations. So what it basically does is we are able to uh, determine whether a person of interest has appeared in another place at a distinct time by the same or different camera. 
So here we can see that this image is the reference person of interest. And we are able to see that whether this uh, person has been captured by another camera at a different time or, or by the same camera in some other location. So how PIDM helps here? The PIDM helps here by generating images as a source of data augmentation, which, which can be utilized to improve results. So basically we are able to generate images with, uh, with the different angles for the same person, uh, which helps in training, uh, this, uh, model and it, uh, improves the person at re-identification task and gives better results. Uh, the images are augmented with the standard images to fine tune the ResNet backbone to perform this task. What is standard images here? These standard images are randomly selected Im images from the training data set of real uh, market 1501, which in initializes the ResNet 15 network. Now looking at the results here, by utilizing this PIDM model, we see that PIDM outperforms the previous methods of uh, this task and uh, in terms of map scores and is able to generate uh, better results. Uh, now let's conclude this paper. Uh, here we see that we say that this is the first diffusion-based approach for post-guided person image generation. Uh, the author has introduced two uh, new things, uh, a texture diffusion module and a distinct disentangled classifier free guidance. Uh, this, uh, these both help in uh, modeling the correspondences between the uh, style and pose information available in the source and target images. The PIDM model is evaluated, performing extensive qualitative and quantitative comparisons. Uh, it performs well on metrics, uh, metrics such as FID, SSIM, and LPIPS. The model, in addition, can effectively help in downstream tasks such as person re-identification. Now, let's uh, see the demo and Prudvi will show that. Yeah, since the authors have uh, made the... Uh code and the model weights publicly available, we were able to do a hands-on. So, uh, given a custom input here in, in this case, we have given us in, we, we have given the input of my teammate Manu, uh, and, a randomly selected pose, giving these two as, uh, the input to the model, the model is able to generate a completely new realistic image that is aligned, completely aligned with the pose and the, uh, and the style at the same time. Right. So we, we, we also looked at some other, uh, we, we gave the model some, uh, additional poses and, um, these were the results. As you can see that the model is able to generate highly realistic images that both, uh, align with pose and style. You might be wondering this, this is not Manu, uh, and we, we can observe, a gender, gender switch here to investigate further. We have given the model, uh, an input from the data set that it was trained on. So these were the results. So we can see that it is able to, uh, so we, uh, the input style image is the data set it was trained on. It's from the data set it was trained on, and we have uh, curated and selected, uh, these, uh, four poses that are more feminine. So the model is able to, uh, while it is able to, um, uh, generate realistic images, both aligned with pose and style. It is also able to handle these edge cases where it has to uh, generate the uh, the man in a feminine pose. So I think these are exceptionally good results. And um, with that, we conclude the paper.